Hello and welcome to season four, episode two of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, inventor of the Creative Feet line of sewing machine products. And I'm so excited to uh, have you all here today for this fun project where I'm not going to be using the sewing machine, which you usually see me on. Have any of you done fabric painting before and found that the fabric got all stiff? So what I'm going to show you today is how not to have your fabric get stiff so that you can have the fun of painting on your fabric and creating one of a kind projects without feeling as though you're giving someone something cheesy because the fabric isn't soft. I'm in fact wearing a blouse that I inked using the products I'm going to be showing you today. And I love this top. I like to wear it when I paint because I deliberately painted it with a bunch of dots so that if I get ink on me, no one knows that I did. That way I don't have to wear a smock, a boring outfit. I am talking about the fact that on the bottom of the screen where you're viewing me, you should be seeing the products that I'm going to be using today shown on the bottom. So you can actually order inside YouTube now. You don't have to sit there and look inside of our page and try to find the words. You can actually see the picture, the color of the ink. See, if, tell me if you guys have found that. If you have, give me a thumbs up so I know it's working. And we will soon have that set up on Facebook as well. We are in the process of setting up all of our new opportunities that the platforms are giving to those of us who create for you. Another really exciting thing is they have allowed me to have a private YouTube area. So that is something that I have turned on. I haven't really had a chance because we just did it last night. Haven't had a chance to put much in there yet, but there will be private chats and special patterns. And you're going to have the ability to, to like, when you type in the chat, there'll be like a cute little badge for you. So you'll stand out from everybody else. So if you want to join my YouTube private group, well, it'd be great if you do. I'd appreciate it. It'll help me create more for you. And today I'm going to show you how we ink fabric and create, and I'm going to create a notepad cover next week. I'm going to turn what I create today. I'm going to actually probably just do the stitching tomorrow or next week on Fabrically Speaking Live that airs every Thursday at 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. If you don't know what time it is in Arizona, all you have to do is type in a search window, what time is it in Arizona? And then it will help you to know what time it is so that you know what time to be live or what time to join in. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, um, please, I hope you do so today and hit the like button on your way out of the live because that helps us, helps YouTube know that you're having fun with me. So I'm going to now show you the top and try not to tell you everything I'm doing and just do it. This is a design that I created and this is one of the patterns that I'll toss into the new group. Those of you in the VIP group at uh, Create with Claire Rowley, which is my free online school, know that you will be getting this pattern in there as well as the pattern for how to get it all set up on a book. And that is a tear up from what you get on YouTube. I also turned back on my Patreon account, which I only had open for like a day in 2017. This is the Kona and I like this in cream fabric. So 100% cotton. I haven't treated it. I haven't washed it. It wouldn't be a bad idea to do so, but I didn't have a chance and I'm not really going to be washing this item. 
and I have not yet ever had the ink not take to this fabric, even if I didn't treat it beforehand. So you're not seeing the products. There is a link underneath and I can't go to my channel because it will crash this live. But you'll see links underneath and one is called store, I think. And inside store, you'll see as time goes on, they'll have all of the Creative Feet products in there. So we've got thousands of products, like I said, and we just created this atmosphere last night. So YouTube actually checks the products, make sure that we're, that we're a good company and that the products are in stock, that the weights are right. They make sure we ship right. And since we've been around for 35 years, all of our products should propagate, but that's a lot. I think they actually have real human beings checking these things. Some things are still done by humans. So I don't use spray starch when I'm going to ink because that's adding an element onto the fabric that I really haven't tried it. I'm looking for my water bottle. Where's my spray bottle? That's all right. I'll just use the iron. How many of you have incredibly warm weather today? I feel very, very blessed to say that I do. I, I just went to uh, take the shipment out to the mailbox area for the postal worker and hopefully he didn't already come here. And if he has, then I will have to leave. I have to make sure I, I shut down at four. When I ink, I tend not to want to stop. And and next week, I'll be using the Octi Hoops. So if you have them and you are feeling challenged on them, I had a few phone calls this week of people saying, I haven't used mine yet, but I'm determined to do it now. So this is a good project for you to set up to use it for. I got to bring my blow dryer, get my blow dryer set up in here. Generally, what I would do before doing something like this is I would take the fabric and overall ink the entire fabric with colors, but before doing so, block any areas that I want to have solid and to stand out. And one of the items you can use to block is the liquid-based glue. So if you have our liquid-based glue, which isn't a glue, it's really just water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle, on this pattern, I have daisies, and the daisy petals are white. This fabric is not white. So I'm gonna actually use white paint on this. So if you're familiar with painting, there's different terms used. There's opaque. Opaque is fabric or ink or paint that blocks the color. It's kind of like a heavier weight of thread for embroidery. If you have heavier thread, it covers the fabric better. If you have opaque paint, it covers the color better. <laughs> I didn't put it on cotton. I'm like, why isn't this getting warm? I'm so excited everything's working because I finally, I, I went to like college last week learning everything I needed to know about the camera settings and everything because we used to have a good show and then all of a sudden things started going awry. So I learned and I know what I'm doing now. I'm so excited. I'm so proud of me. Now we're going to have good shows from this point forward. I can't wait to meet more of you as every time I would try to go live in Facebook, I wasn't reaching everybody. Thank you for being patient with me as I learned. What I'm doing now is I'm going to find center and I have two pieces of fabric because, well, there's two sides to the notebook and I don't want to end up only having plain fabric on the inside. So I'm going to ink extra fabric for the inside panels so that, and you could even have like make a little bookmark. I think I still have it in here. Put it. 
You can make a bookmark, which is another pattern that I still have to put in the VIP group. Know that I have not forgotten and I will be doing that. So uh, you could make the outside and the little bookmark match as long as you plan ahead and make sure that you don't forget to actually ink all of the fabrics at the same time. So I just take the fabric and fold it once and fold it twice. And I haven't cut this precisely at all. You can use an iron and iron this, or you can use one of my pressers. And this is the tequila sunrise. So if you don't want to wait for your iron, you can just go like this. And now you have a center mark on your fabric. See how nicely that pressed. Take this out. Now the next thing that we have to deal with is when you put water on fabric, what happens to the water? It goes through the fabric, right? Give me a thumbs up if you knew, if you poured water on this, that the water would drip and go through to the backside and hit this. So we don't want that to happen. And I have two stabilizers that you can use to prevent that from happening. The stick and tear, which is what I would use if you don't want to remove the stabilizer after you ink. So on a book cover, if I weren't going to quilt it, I would use the stick and tear and leave it in there. And it gives this fabric more body and you don't have to worry about the ink coming and bleeding out as well. It kind of harnesses or corrals the ink. So instead of using the stick and tear, which is the tree frog stabilizer, the green frog stabilizer that was used all over the world for making masks during the COVID to bought to back the fabric. So instead I'm going to use our hold light, which is the hummingbird stabilizer. Oof, I had the heater on earlier and boy, I'm going to share my screen so that you guys can see. what I'm talking about in case some of you haven't been to our site. There it is. Phew, sorry. I'm not having a hot flash, I promise. Where is my desktop? There it is. Here we go. So when you're looking at creativefeet.com, you can see this little boy. He loved learning his octi hoops. One of my friends, one of my colleagues teaches in Seattle, Washington, and she has a school for kids and the entire class, one of the little kids was so small, she couldn't touch the floor and the adult had to push the pedal for her. And they all did ornaments for Christmas using the octi hoops. If they can do it, you can do it. You just got to give it a try. So when you go here and you go to products, go down to stabilizers and batting. And the batting that I use is the bamboo batting, which you see right here. So if you're, and I had several questions this week, I guess a lot of you are feeling like embroidering or learning your octaves. And I'm so excited for you because it's so much fun. Stick and tear is what we use on the back of the hoop. Phew. Oh, I got, I was going to show you, but I have the, all right. So you use the stick and tear on the back of the hoop and it comes in a variety of different sizes. If you're going to use the octi hoops, you want to use the 12 inch size for utilizing all of the different size hoops. We have three different size frames in the kit. So you get all three. When you embroider, you use one frame at a time and to get the fabric to adhere, to the hoop we just take the stick and tear and attach it to the back of the frame so in order to get one roll for all sizes the 12 inch roll is your best option Whew. okay and then 
to back your fabric, especially on terry cloth towels, we use the Hold Light Stabilizer, the Hummingbird, and it comes in 10 inch and, or 10 feet and 20 feet and 27 inch wide flat fold. And uh, the cover up is used on top of towels to prevent your fabric color from showing through your stitching. Where is a terry cloth towel? All right, let's stop on there. If you can't find all the colors that I'm using, just go to the top and go to products. And under supplies and notions, you'll find all of the different inks that I'm using. So we have the liquid base glue, which blocks your color or blocks your fabric. So you can dip it and dip your whole fabric in, in ink or water down ink and any area that you had the liquid based on there if you don't leave it soaking will uh, not allow the ink to get on it this is uh, the plaid this is a very popular one it's the only one that says inks and basically it's, it's a very thin version of paint this is textile color and uh, this is really thick so you'll need to stir it and they're opaque colors we have Lumineer and Neopaque. All of these can be used on fabric, so you don't have to uh, not get one of them, and they're all unique. So for, if you haven't seen the school yet, it's Create with Claire Rowley, and inside of here is a social media platform for you all to get to know one another. And I just announced on the actual inside the school that I have a, a Discord group that I created for you all because people were saying how they missed one another from one session to the next. So now you guys can chat inside the Discord. And if you, those of you who already joined, um, don't do it while I'm live right now because I haven't silenced the app and it, I don't, it's going to make noise. It's a noisy app. So back to the fun stuff. Enough of that. So on this t-shirt that you see here, I have the, the cover up, the, the panda bear is covering up the t-shirt. I used a clear version of the cover up and it comes in 16 colors. So that blocks the uh, pink from showing through and keeps the embroidery raised up. I'm trying to find the towel, but I don't, I don't know where it is. And on the back, you can see it's perfectly clear. There's no residue or anything remaining in that. We had the stick and tear and the hold light was a barrier between the, the shirt and the stick and tear. So now I need to find my hold lights. Feel free to ask questions and know that I, it's hard for me to monitor the chat. I'm hoping to have Michelle back on Thursdays. She has, she is my assistant and she worked yesterday. So I'm super excited about that. Got a lot done yesterday. So when you support the channel, you help me pay for Michelle, which helps me be able to create more for you. This is the whole bite and it's kind of like a saran wrap. And this is actually a brand new and I try not to use it in case we start selling out of something. This is the cover up and you can see it's it's a vinyl and it comes in 6 inch and 18 inch wide rolls. I'm going to have to cut that whole bite. Oh well. The design isn't that large. That I'm going to ink but I want to block the entire fabric so that it doesn't seep and that's where it's really nice to have a wider piece of stabilizer so if you were wanting to use this for inking large pieces of fabric then you'd want to get the widest roll of stick and tear or use the hold light and 
like I said, sometimes I like to use the, the hold light. Sometimes I like to use the stick and tear. I'm going to take and see how big this is. And I'm going to want to do both fabrics. I'm going to fold it over and... This is also fantastic for drafting patterns. So if you're a garment sewer and you want to draft a pattern for someone, you can actually iron this right onto the fabric after you have drafted the pattern. And one of the benefits of that is that if your fabric frays a lot, it will lock the fraying and won't allow your fabric to fray. It's also a really neat thing for minky and other fabrics that tend to break apart a lot. Okay, so now I'm going to iron and when you iron this, You don't use steam. And it is shiny side to the iron. So this is kind of a, a cheater way of doing this, but hey, I think I'm going to be really happy I did it this way. The only way I would be ha unhappy is if I didn't have right side if I had the right side facing the stabilizer. Looks like I got it correct. Good. All right, here we go. So it doesn't take a real hot iron and you just, that's it. It's, it's bonded. It's really quick. And I'm still going to use a board to uh, paint on. Ah, the ink, the steam was on. So why do we not want steam? Because this stabilizer, and anytime you're using any stabilizer that has a solid, non-porous, I just join the two together. <laughs> so in other words, this, this is solid or there's no pores in it. So if steam gets pushed through, it just bounces right back and can burn you. Let's see how this goes. So for those of you who are wondering what I'm giggling about, I'm about to explain it. So this is kind of like laminating something. And I have ironed the two together. So I should have opened it. Those of you who are new to my channel, welcome and don't hesitate to reach out and ask questions. A lot of people in here are pretty good and they know a lot. This is season four, episode two of Fabrically Speaking Live. And I also have a lot of pre-recorded videos and we'll be increasing the number of those this year. So if a live takes too long for you, you don't have the patience for it, or if you just have something to do and you can't stay, know that this will be saved on our YouTube channel and inside of the Facebook group. So you can always catch it on the replay if you don't have time to watch the whole thing. what you're seeing facing up is the wrong side of the fabric and now we have a waterproof barrier between the fabric and the board and now you can place it on the board however we first got to get our design onto the fabric right so how I like to do that is to use a cutter pillar which you'll find at creativefeet.com. 
and this is a light tablet this is the basic and these are in stock we also have a larger one and I want to explain a little bit now I created my own unique pattern this one here but if you want to search or Google or use any of your search engines where's this cord my cord ran away with me so it has a little cord and this one is like the cell phone and you just plug it in and then tap once twice oops <laughs> once twice I don't have a warm enough finger today I don't think and now you can see through and this is a actual line free mat you can have the mat on there or don't have the mat on there and then use a washi tape so what i did to find these designs is i just searched for hearts and flowers designs and since i don't want to ever violate anyone's copyright I draft my own patterns, but I want you to see that you can legally use any of these designs, any design that you find, as long as you don't try to profit from that design. So if you're just making it for yourself or gifts, that's fine. But if you want to launch an Etsy business, then you'll want to make sure you get a licensed, free, a free licensed design. And I do allow you to use my designs should you want to do that. If you make a million dollars, then you have to give me a piece. <laughs> so this is to hold the actual paper in place so it doesn't slip on you while you tra trace your designs. And this pattern shows where I should be positioning the fabric based on the center that I created, which oddly is still there even though I ironed. So there's the center. And I just want to make sure I have fabric going all the way around so I can create the actual notebook afterward. But you don't have to make a notebook with this. You can use this fabric for whatever you want. You can, you can make a bag or put it on a t-shirt, anything that you like. So I, I, want to, I want to make sure that the fabric and the pattern you know, are lined up properly for my book. And it's easier to trace a design without color. So this is now I know that I'm lined up with the fabric or the pattern behind it. You like my design? Yeah, so this will be in the... Uh, I've got to figure out how to do the community inside of YouTube. There we go. If any of you have any advice or ideas or suggestions of what you would like me to do inside of the join my group YouTube channel, I would love to hear your suggestions in the comments in the video. Do that in the, not in the chat, but in the comments afterward. I haven't had a chance to look at the stream at all. So if I have not responded, know that I love you and I will go back a little bit if it's not too many chats and it's so exciting to be able to say that again, that there's so many of you here today. This was the very first t-shirt embroidered by a person through the t-shirt. And so this shirt is, is, is older than the Octi Hoops. Before the Octi Hoops, you had to embroider on a fabric and then wash it and shrink it and then shrink your shirt and then cut out your embroidery and then stick it on your shirt and then stitch around and try to make it look like you didn't do it that way. And uh, so this, because of the new science, because of having 100% polyester thread that doesn't shrink, you shrink the shirt, 
using 100% polyester stabilizer does not shrink. So all of these elements make it so that you have no shrinkage on and no puckering on your shirts. I do have video, a video on my YouTube channel of the embroidery process of this and someone saw it and she goes, I can't believe this video is still live. This is still relevant, even though it's so old. So yeah, I'm old. Creative Feet is celebrating our 35th year coming up in August. Sorry, I got a dog here. In this design, because I was speaking with someone on the phone this week, she was talking about embroidering on towels. Well, maybe this size of this heart is too large for a towel. So I gave more than one size of design. If ever I give a design size and you'd like one, another size, just, just, call, just let me know and I will provide another grouping of sizes for you guys. I love making it so that you can create what you want. So you want to make sure you use a pen that is not water erase and not air erase. This is my favorite kind of pen is the friction pen, which the, the name describes how it's erase. It erases from friction. So this is not a real eraser but the friction causes the line to disappear. I got a bunch of different camera angles set up for you guys now too. And everybody, all of you that know that when I go live in Zoom in the school, that my settings kept getting messed up, know that I have set up settings for zoom so that won't happen anymore and i'm going to have access to my buttons the next vip live is going to be smooth sailing and so much fun hi susan hi brenda hi sheila hi amy hi is that lynn i always admire anyone who's watching from australia and other parts of the country or the world so I'm probably going to start just kind of saying hi towards the end of the video. And at the end of the video, I am going to ask a question for the giveaway prize. Hi from Richmond, Virginia. So I don't know who you are, but you have Captivations. That's a good name. Doreen. Hi, Doreen. Hi, Susan. And Dur I already said Doreen. Wendy and S. May. Linda Jacobs. Oh, hi, Linda Jacobs. It's been a long time. Wendy Harper. I'm so sorry that I was just, you know, not doing well on my thing. I was, I missed all you guys so much. It was all my fault that you guys were missing out. I'm so glad to have finally figured things out. So now I'm going to just go ahead, continue tracing. And if you have any questions, this is, I got my eyes on the on the uh stream <laughs> and i'm sorry i can't go back all the way because there's just so many of you on here today yay so here we go i'm gonna switch so you can watch me draw and i actually like a pin a different one of these better these are a marker version of the friction pen it still says friction pen on it but it's like a marker so i don't have to rub i can just draw it's delightful and as i do this i'm thinking all right if i wanted to ink the entire fabric first which is generally what i would do in the case of uh let me show you This fabric right here was just white and I took the fabric and I create, I got a bowl, a Tupperware container and I put water in it and I put some peach, I don't remember which one, that may be coral in the plaid, uh, which we call it, what's it called? Uh, 
called uh, Fabric Creations inks. And I just crunched it up and dunked it in. And I left it crunched up. And then I took it out. And then when you're finished, it looks like fabric. It has texture. It, what, it isn't just a solid fabric. And then I inked over that. So in this case, I'm not. I'm doing the, the, the important, the little details first. And then um, I'm going to ink the other area after. So uh, I, I was going to do it the, the other way, but I didn't have time. I actually worked and yesterday, I don't even know if I should tell you, I worked from, I guess it was eight o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning. Yep. I almost worked 24 hours and it, all of this just so I can get everything set up so that I can serve you guys better and help you have more fun. The Octi Hoops is, is one of the best things for stress. So if any of you are experiencing stress right now, know that the Octi Hoops is a sure stress releaser. And if you've ever thought, no way, free motion, stress release. No, 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 no. Free motion causes stress. If you felt like free motion is stressful, raise your hand or give me a thumbs up or any of that. Yeah, Linda tie-dye kind of look you can actually create tie-dye look you can you can do all the watercolor elements with this stuff you can crunch it up tie rubber bands pour the diluted uh, colors of all of the different types that we offer and then pour it over it and then you just open it up and it creates that that tie-dye effect it's, they're so cool instead of having to worry about using real dye which you know can be quite messy and be able to do it in, in a more relaxed way. Like I'm just sitting here at my table and I could, I could have a movie playing while I, while I ink or paint with these. I don't know why I'm talking so funny. All right. Is it, oh, I, I'm boring for a second there. Please ask me questions, you guys. Could you get them friction pins in your store? I'm going to, I did have a pilot, a pilot salesperson did come to my shop and we had a meeting and that's how I learned more about the pens because I was trying to prove that the ink does not come back after it's cold, after it's washed. And then she explained to me the process and how it all works. So during that time, as soon as I can, I will. If not, I'll have a link in the description below. <laughs> Trying to stop doing that. I'll probably be creating like an Amazon store or location where you can go where all my favorite things are. And then you know that you're getting the right product and that you're supporting my channel. <laughs> so I'm, a, I'm, I'm on... I think I, I think I got four and a half hours sleep, but you know what? I feel fantastic. In fact, after this, if the mailman actually showed up, I hadn't shown up before we put our shipment out there. I'm going to take the DOG for a W-A-L-K. Oh, by the way, the one below is the Ultra, and it's considerably bigger. It's twice the area of uh, the Glow. And these have been out of stock for a while. I know that they're coming back in stock soon. So just know that if you order the Ultra right now, you, you're going to have to wait for that. And when you do order on our site, it does say, um, it says, we'll be back in stock soon if it's an item that's out of stock. And I know that YouTube will not allow us to put an item in our YouTube channel store that's out of stock. So you can rest assured that anything that they're showing inside of our store is in stock. All right, so I have my, now what I need to do is 
plot out, because I'm making an actual notebook, I need to plot out the, and it's so nice because I can lay it right on top of the illustration, and block out where my spine is. And then I want to have the center. <laughs> I'm constantly turning the light on and off because I rest my arm on the on off switch. All right. So there it is. Isn't that cute? Now we get to ink. <laughs> All right, time to have fun. I mean, I'm having so much fun. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that you're all with me today. Thank you so much for joining me, for supporting Creative Feed all these years. So I got my board now that I have my design on there. And just so I don't lose track of the spine, because I might want to do something fun on it. And I created a spine section because this book doesn't want to lay flat it, it opens up because it's too tight so adding extra for that area is going to make this this next book which is going to be mine i might give it away who knows may give it to my my daughter she loved her birthday present which was the bookmark which i keep looking around for so I'm going to adhere this to the board so that it doesn't slip around using tape and the I would normally use a cheaper tape but if you get the whole light attached to that it's going to hold it really tight and now we don't have to worry about it wrinkling and the paintbrush is going to love to uh, it loves this surface if a paintbrush can love anything <laughs> Raffle off my, raffle it off. There's an idea. But then what, a, but then I won't have one. I'm just kidding. All right. So now, yeah, I was thinking that we can actually do like live home shopping stuff. So I can go live with certain products and show you the products and you can buy it right there while I'm live. Isn't that sound exciting? I, in fact, was on the Home Shopping Network for years. If you saw me there first, it was me. All right, so I am now I have to choose my colors. So how would a raffle go? You guys buy a raffle ticket? There are rules on stuff like that, so I have to make sure I follow all the legal, the legal stuff. Let's see with this. This is going to be... Come on, camera. You're supposed to be on. Why aren't you on? Hang on while I check something. This is my lunch. Over here. I think I clicked something. Oh, now it's showing up. Okay. Oh, I had, oh, I learned something. <laughs> so this is one of the angles that I have for today. And then let's see, I have, so that's, is that close tight? This is close tight. So we'll be able to get even closer and I just have to get myself in in there and since that's not comfortable I'm going to move my camera real quick oh yeah that's what I'm doing I love these little trays. I got them at, I think at Joann's. I, I don't really remember. One of the discount stores. And there were a whole bunch of, they nest within each other. 
So there's these little square ones and and they're made out of recycled bottles. So they're really ink and paint and waterproof. Anytime I have things in that come in these kind of bottles, I save the bottles so that I can put a little bit of ink and or a little bit of paint and water in these. And so these are probably colors that we'll check out, which is fun to do for your large fabric sections. And then these are other things that you can use. These are insane. They're so intense. This is the jacquard. We, um, we don't have these on our site right now, but these are the alcohol inks. So they're really thin, but they're insanely bright. I might play around with this today. We'll see. And then we also have our made for creative feet paint brushes set that we offer. And you should see that. I think that is showing up in the store inside of YouTube. And of course you can also find it under supplies at creativefeet.com. <laughs> Things are falling. So here's another tray. And this has this is a shorter tray, so I, I keep my Lumiere and Jacquards and opaque paints in the shorter tray. I'll try to find this set on uh, Amazon and see if I can find it for you so you guys can organize yourself like I organize myself. This is the paint. This is the paintbrush set that you receive, and I'm an artist, so I have lots of paintbrushes, and this is just a little bit of them. I have a new table that I forgot to bring in here to help me with this lesson. Let's see. I'll move this over. Oh no. I don't know if the person I emailed today who bought almost every color and we were out of the fruit punch. So don't order fruit punch because I think, I think they stopped making it. And it's so upsetting because I really liked that color, but we have the jacquards and the other colors in addition to what you can get in the fabric creation. So I'm just a little whiny when, when somebody stops making something I like, are you guys that way? I used to use this eyeliner and my sister and every, all my friends, we all used to use this Maybelline eyeliner. And then probably because it's bad for you, they, they discontinued it or changed it. And, uh, we all kept buying it over and over again, hoping it would went back to the way it used to be and it never did. <laughs> but I don't like it when they change things on me. Target had these. All right. So exciting. So what I'm going to do, because I want to, I'm going to ink because I want to. I have to think this out, think this through. What's the best course, the best process, so that whatever I do to the majority of the fabric doesn't bleed in to the beautiful design that I'm gonna create. And if I use the liquid-based glue right now and I, and I were to mask the area, well, I'd probably end up with, a, with like a line going around it, so. I think that's still the best course. So what I'm going to do, and I was thinking about trying the liquid base glue with a brush. So this is the first time I'm doing this. If I can find my bottle, there it is. And liquid based is what I use for pinning. So you don't have to pin anything. And uh, you can even put a whole garment together with this and try it on before you sew it to make sure it fits right. And then it just washes away or you can pull the fabrics apart. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all the way around the design with this. And it's not that easy to squeeze for that long. So I was thinking, what if we could pour some of this out and use a paintbrush that would be easier on our hands? Three dollars. Three dollars, that's all. Okay, any of you have any questions for me while I'm looking at the chat? And remember, at the end of the show, I give a, I'm going to give away a pattern. One of the patterns you find at creativefeet.com. Um, it'll be a digital download for you. And uh, so if you, if you want to search and see what they are, you can pick which one you want. I don't have my, my ink pots. I'm like, I can't put it in anything. Where are they? I was all ready before. What did I do with it? And the reason I don't know is because I went live to do this last week and we had a failure. So I'm, I'm going to uh, switch to the top camera and give you a little music and I'm going to run really quick to get something to paint with. So song and that and I will be right back it shouldn't take me long accidentally throw it away I may have actually thrown this cool thing that I have with lots of little troughs for putting the colors in sorry about that all right 
So I just need to put some of the liquid base into a container. Do I have the music playing still? Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's not morning. <laughs> what time is it? It's 3.03. Good. We're only an hour in. And hi, La Lana. Is it Lana? Or, oh, Laura. <laughs> I need my glasses. An egg dish. Yes, egg, egg containers make great ones. I have some of those too. I got stacks of, I like to reuse things. This is a container from a, a microwavable TV dinner. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I tend not to throw things away. This is just a uh, Starbucks. No, this is a, another coffee place that I like to go to. Their coffee cup and, uh, I probably have had this a year at least. So I'm frugal. Yeah, you could call me frugal. So I'm going to uh, switch to the other camera and let's see how the liquid base paints with a brush. And I'm also intrigued to think about what else we might be able to do with that process. Do any of you have any experience with masking and adding color into masking and to get a different type of effect? If you do, please share in the in the chat. So I could be squeezing this out, having to be very precise going around the design or talking to you and just letting it come out. I do have the egg dishes somewhere. I have a whole stack of them. I actually have an art cabinet here where I was putting everything. So I'll get more organized. We have to move in May, so I'm a little bit disheveled right now. Okay, so I'm going to use... The brushes that we offer and refrain from trying any others so that you know that everything I do you can do with the brushes that we that we offer and in our set you got three rounds or two rounds and a flat and then the fan brush and I I highly recommend you never put your brushes down into water you know, or you ruin the tips of your bristles, which is what I've done to this one. So the, I don't know, I'm usually pretty good at not doing that, but apparently I failed to catch that I flipped the brush over on this one. So unfortunately it's not as pretty as it should be. My hands look dry. You don't want to see dry hands, do you? What time is it, Lynn? So I'm going to add water. It is water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. So by adding water, we can make it thinner. And so this is, like I said, my first try. This is when I wish I had my cell phone capable. I do have a way of doing it, but it seems to, it seemed to crash that I'm not trying anything new today. So now I'm just going to mask around the outside of the entire design. Is that what I want to do? Yeah, we'll do that. And then so the process would be easier if I first masked around on the inside 
did the overall fabric first. So this is like a backwards way. So, you know, it's good to learn more than one way to paint a piece of fabric. If I really think this through, I could create kind of a glowing appearance. Appearance? Appearance. <laughs> There's a new word. 8, 10 a.m. on Friday. I kind of feel like it's 8, 8, it's 8. 10 on Friday because I didn't sleep <laughs> enough last night. This is definitely brushing out beautifully though. So what I was trying to explain is wherever I put this, it's not go ink will not go on that. This is going to mask it only if I allow it to dry first. It also prevents fabric colors from bleeding into other areas. I definitely put, took more than I needed. So this would be a time when you want to just pour color down. Then you would mask an area so that you don't discolor it on accident. And afterward, you can... Get it wet after all the ink is in the other areas. You can wet it down, wash this off, and then color in this area. So thinking about that, I'm kind of fanning it out a little bit so that because I might I might like it with just that color, with just the fabric neutral color there. Are any of you inking along with me today? I know that there are some colors that we're out of stock on and or almost out of stock on but we will be getting another order in soon the stabilizer that I the clear one here is hold light it's the hummingbird it's the stabilizer that has a hummingbird on the label in creativefeet.com it comes in 10 feet and 20 feet and the amount I used just now was two feet at least. Yeah, three feet maybe. But that's because I'm doing a large piece of fabric here. If I were doing a, a shirt, I would definitely put this all, definitely all over the back of the shirt where, you know, within. So if the area I was just going to draw, if I was just going to put this on a shirt, I would use hold light I would have it go at least three inches four inches all the way around beneath the shirt just to be sure that none of the ink bleeds out and that's that's what that does this locks the ink in that spot it won't allow it to go through and spread so the hold light and the stick and tear is another option stick and tear is I like to use it when I'm going to leave it behind the fabric as a stabilizer. So if you want it to be soft so you can do free motion quilting on it afterward, use the hold light instead. Imagine making a center block on your quilt and doing a real elaborate design and then inking all the supporting fabrics all of your sashing and your back of your of your squares using the ink so all of your colors are cohesive and match one another this is one of the most powerful things i just i mean once they came out with it to where it was completely soft like this i was super excited about the possibilities and I did test a lot of different products on the market. So the ones that we carry at creativefeet.com, I know for sure are gonna give you a good result. As far as washing, and I did do a shirt that faded and then it was a cotton poly blend. So I would just recommend if you're gonna ink like plain shirts that you hand wash. Don't throw it in the washing machine on hot, which is what I did, to test it. If I hadn't, it would be brighter. 
So this is the liquid-based glue, and the reason you can't see anything is because it's clear. And I'm masking so that when I do put the heart color and the daisies, that it won't bleed out and go past that. Because this is a this is the focal point. And out here we can make a mess and it's fun. So say you wanted to utilize the color of the fabric and you want to write love you could write love right here in liquid based and then ink all over and then afterward you you get it wet and your the word love will not have any color on it this is really working well you guys but i i used way more than i needed Wasting liquid based not good. There's so many uses for it. Which apparently I I mentioned it and did a good job recently because we've been having people buy three bottles, four bottles at a time. I'm pretty sure you have it, don't you, Lynn? Yeah, the liquid base glue comes in in a bottle and you just squeeze it into into here so now i have to kind of look at an angle and look for the the light reflecting off this to see that i have it in all areas and it's dry over here so it's harder to see this is when you get your magnifying glasses out to make sure you've masked the whole area so another area where I feel like I should mask is around the daisies. So I'm going to start with the daisies and then afterward go in and do the heart. If I don't finish this, I will finish it and I will put it in the members video. So if you join the creative feet or join actually my channel, YouTube is renamed my channel Claire Rowley, which is fine with me because that's who I am. <laughs> Sometimes it just like I can spend an entire week editing one video. It's, it's amazing how long it takes to do a really good job at editing. And the reason we edit is so you don't get bored, which you might be feeling if you're not familiar with me and you're not into hanging out all day in my live chats. But know that, uh, so you'll either see it as a video on my YouTube channel or it will be put into one of the members only areas. There we go. So it's all masked and now I get to add some color and I, I have wasted a good amount, a good amount of this kind of sad. This is water soluble stabilizer in a bottle. So I could actually just brush this thin and it will dry out and it will become a film of water soluble stabilizer. You can also use this method on fabric. So should you want to sew on fabric that stretches, well, you can brush on using a wider brush, using the fan brush, and you can stabilize just one area. Say you want to do embroidery on something and you want to stabilize it, but you don't want to have any stabilizer afterward. I could have brushed that on the back side of the fabric with this larger brush. And then whenever it washes, it washes out. So just plain old water. And it doesn't even, it doesn't take hot water, just regular room temperature is fine. And now that's clean. I need my paper towels. Where are you guys? I think I ran out of paper towels and took them somewhere else.
A tissue will do. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to use white and you want a white that's going to block the fabric. And I'm all out of, my white ran out in my stash. So I either need to go get another white or use a different kind. And I'm going to use a different kind because I've got it right here. This is the textile white 220. And I don't know if we have this right now. It may be sold out. That doesn't mean it's gone for long. We just, in fact, they're not far from us. So we usually get this pretty good. Two bottles. So you might think something's wrong with it because it's so thick. But remember this is water soluble as well or water dilutable. So you just take and pull some of that thick paint out. It almost looks like peanut butter. But that's because it's the lid and it's been sitting for a long time. So you can take the end of your paintbrush and stir it. And I recommend you do this because there it separates. Kind of like peanut butter separates if you have healthy peanut butter, it separates. One hundred percent cotton fabric is better for all of these to stay and be able to be washed on hot with bleach. But I still wouldn't even do that. Why do that? Why take a risk of wiping away what you've done, right? So just take and what was I thinking, or what was I saying? <laughs> I looked at the I looked at Tina's got over to the pharmacy. I hope you're okay. The, I lost my train of thought. So now I need to get that off of there. Sometimes you just got a finger paint. I don't want to waste it. But you are going to get messy and you should get it off of you quick. Especially if you have a manicure, it'll get in your nails. I like to use a squirt bottle for adding water to paint so that I don't have too much go in there because just a little bit will, will thin this out. We'll wait for Tina. Yeah. I have to leave if the mailman didn't show up. I have to shut down in a half an hour and I should because we go too long and then YouTube thinks whatever they think. I don't know. I, the computer thinks. So now you can see it's it's got a real nice, it's getting a nice smooth consistency to it. I try not to, to do this with good brushes. I have some worn out brushes that I use for mixing paint. That was very thick on the lid and now you can see it's nice and smooth. And it'll be able to block the cream color on the fabric. So the daisies will have bright white petals. And that's one of the things that I think makes daisies so pretty. And I can cover the lines on these petals. But to create the illusion or the appearance of the petals overlapping one another, we'll want to add a little bit of purple to the paint to create shadows where petals overlap. I need to go to the close shot, huh? Close, top, close. Is this better? <laughs> I really should wipe my hand off. I'm, I'm rarely clean after I paint anyway, so. Do any of you get messy when you paint?
male art, male art, male art. I don't know what you're trying to say, Linda. Unless you're answering someone else and see, that's what I get for trying to figure out what you guys are talking about. Now this is going to be yellow, but to get it to be bright yellow, I'm going to put white down first. And that will make it easier to get that, that lemon yellow color. I could probably get my hand clean if I stopped, but I finally got the brush in my hand. I don't want to let go now. I'd like to finish this design before the live ends today, but I don't know. It's better to paint farther away from you and work your way forward instead of starting with the bottom flower and then trying to not hit the petal that you already painted. So I should have started with this flower up here. I may have made it a little bit too thin as well so that I may have to do two coats to have it be pure white. I enjoy getting messy with the with art but there are times when I try not to and when I painted professionally 40 to 100 paintings a day you would not know that I painted at all for a career. We were all so neat and tidy you just learned how to not get too messy as long as it's not my fingernails I'm all right with it because it'll come off so while this is a permanent paint on fabric it doesn't it's it's a water base paint so it'll come off of you and non-toxic so you can have the kiddos help you are any of you going to do this because I'll get the pattern in the school after as soon as, as soon as I get out of as soon as I know whether or not I have to go to the post office first at some point today it will be in there so you can paint this and be ready to do the next step next week which is to stitch on this fabric with batting and create a quilted fiber art project that you can use for whatever end result you'd like and I as mentioned before will be making a notebook cover out of mine so the reason I use cream color and then use white is because, well, you have a nice contrast then. Hi, Donna. You don't need to apologize for arriving late. Do know that this will be live and or you will be able to watch the playback. So you're doing, do all of my paints have fabric medium? No. You can use fabric mediums if you want. That will retard the drying time and... But I have not found the need for any medium. So if you use medium, then your inks don't bleed as well. So that's one of the reasons for a medium. I have outlined all of this with our liquid based glue and masked the design so that I can paint and know that I'm not going to have the, the paint bleed out. Are you guys able to see this well? Is the light good? Isn't it sweet? Daisies are so pretty. Now I have to once again go into the middle so that my lemon yellow paint will look lemon yellow 
And I deliberately didn't cover all the lines so I know where to put my shadows. After I produce my shadows, I can then add more white if I want. I think when my daughter sees this, she'll go, it's daisies. That must be mine because she loves daisies. All right. To create the shadows, I'm going to add a little bit of purple. Put my lid back on so that I don't end up with what I had before. Messy, messy. Hi, Susan. If I've already said hello to you guys, uh, well, you can never be greeted too many times, right? So we have different purples in, in the color groupings. We also have wine, which can also be utilized as a shadow, but purple, purple, any of these, a blue, a blue indigo kind of color will also make a nice actual shadow color. But um, I know I have so many purple lovers in my group that I'll just do purple. I'm going to clean that brush so it doesn't get dried up on me. Where is my tissue? Note to self, never take your paper towels out of your painting area and not get another roll. The white will be a little bit uh, tacky in comparison to all of the other colors. That's also true of metallics. Metallics also have kind of a little bit of a sticky. They're more opaque than the other colors. I really feel like I should dry or try to get myself a little clean here. Just so you guys can see how you can clean up. But you get it near your fingernail, your ma your manicure, then you're going to really wish you did it. Now, because I diluted the white a bit, it will be not as tacky as some others. That word tacky it sounds tacky. <laughs> okay. I know I'm going to want white again, but I've got more containers. Where'd the purple go? <laughs> you should be shaking your bottles or you got to do the dip in and make your hands all messy and the and the inks these ones the the fabric creations are thinner than all the other ones we offer but you can thin any of the other colors this is a really pretty yellow and then we have real yellow in this and I did find that the yellow faded on this more than the soft inks did on something that I did but remember hand washing your clothing and I used polyester cotton blend fabric so I was testing so if you want to I barely put any in there and now we're creating like a uh, a lavender color Ooh, it's so pretty. Are all my purple lovers loving that color? I want barely any ink on this brush, though. All the rest stays soft, yeah. You can't tell. The shirt I'm wearing, I can't, I can't tell there's paint on it. So now I'm going to go ahead and take this where one petal overlaps the other. I think my dog is growling. Can't tell because I have a hearing piece in my ear. So I can hear myself. And you could, I could have gone with a darker color, could go black and make it a gray. 
but there's purple lovers in here. It kind of just gives it a little bit more dimension and makes the white pop more, right? Can you see the white more here than over here? And I can also go around the center because we want to have the tops of these daisies appear dimensional. All right, I'm having fun now. I feel relaxed. I needed a little of this. That's why I loved it when you guys asked for fabric painting. Whoever asked, thank you. And know that I do listen to you guys. So if you have a request, don't hesitate to write it in the comments. And even better, after the show, write it in the write it in the comments, not just in the chat. If there's something really specific because the chat gets so long and uh, I get notified every time you guys send me a message in the comments after the live is over you always toss the protective cover inside the lid oh no yeah keep that that'll help help your paint last longer if you've tossed them take some saran wrap and put a little piece of saran wrap over the top of your paints and close the lid over that make sure the saran wrap exceeds the cap and you'll have your paint last a lot longer also it's not a bad idea with water-based paints to add a little water to your paints from time to time and then you know stir them up and then close them back up because water it will eventually evaporate leaving you with just the pigment and any binders that they had to put in the paint and then you need a tremendous amount of patience for that to solidify and become thin again, if it's even possible. At some point, it's just not possible. Want to keep your paint nice? And I'm bad. I'm a bad person when it comes to that because I got so much going on. In case you guys didn't know that I'm super busy all the time. <laughs> so on the outside... And then when we go into the yellow, we'll be, I'll show you how to make it even more dimensional so that they look round. Is this close enough or would you like me to try to pull the camera in for a tighter shot? Notice my hand is resting. Oh no, I don't store my bottles upside down. Right side up. <laughs> I would imagine that they could, they could, they could escape. <laughs> in fact, when we ship your bottles of, of inks, we generally put them in Ziploc bags just in case the, they get, because sometimes the postal service won't drive your, your shipment. They'll just toss it on a plane with an air shipment. Those are always fun times when you guys have the ability to have that happen. You're like, how'd you get it here so fast? And because they had room on the plane. Well, then the paints go in the air. And like when we ship to Australia, Lynn, you got some, right? Did they get there safely? We usually put everything in Ziploc bags just in case one opens up. I think you got some inks, didn't you, Lynn? A tighter shot would be great. All right, let me see if I can bring it in closer. <laughs> I was going to get up, but we do that by the magic of this program. Better? So I'm, when I grab the color, I'm spinning, spinning the brush. I do that like this, kind of just spin it to make it so that the brush itself has a nice tip or pointy tip on it. And it's very, very light touch on the, on the fabric. Now this, this paint is diluted or ink, this paint that they've diluted to make the consistency of ink because they're pretty much all paint is 
thin, but it's not bleeding because of why. Why is this without any medium in this paint? Why is it not bleeding and going out here? Because fabric is very absorbent and will grab that water and pull that pigment out. They delivered, you haven't used it yet, but you've got them, good. I'm always worried when we send something overseas and I wish my, I wish your shipments little wings to carry them there safely. So it's nice to know that your orders arrive safely if, if we ship internationally. You never bother me by saying, hey, we got it. You're right, Amy. As usual, or as they say, as usual. <laughs> I think it would be pretty to have these be purple dots or lavender dots. And I didn't, I didn't mask it with the liquid base. So we'll see how, how well that I did here, but I didn't over there. Okay, let's see. I also don't like wasting and I can use this and put my pink or my red, whatever color I'm going to make the heart, and I can use this for that. And I can also add green to this. When you have a color in your artwork and you use that color and mix it with all your other colors, then tonally the overall project becomes you can you may not know why you think wow that looks really cool but that has something to do with it so I'm going to take and add a green and do the green this is the sour apple once again always wash your brush in between and try to clean out the <laughs> the metal I always forget the name of that one of you always says it for me. Donna, sometimes I use fabric markers, but I haven't had, and I also use these Derwent Ink Tints pencils. But I mean, they change so much afterward. I kind, I kind of, and I, I kind of like this, and never wet it. Now I'll be doing more tutorials on things like that. I'm also going to be opening Beyond the Brush Strokes, which is a, another channel, and I'll be doing more art there. So for those of you who like the art, I can do it without bothering people that don't want the art part. Well, we're going to have this channel be more sewing and quilting and embroidery, and then Beyond the Brush Strokes, I'll delve more deep into art and even start showing you oil painting and give you some of the insight as to how I could, how I painted 40 to 100 paintings a day. Back before there were printers. See how little of green I'm putting in there? And I'm going to check it now. Is that going to give me a green? And look at how it is a green. It's a, a minty kind of green. Kind of a muddy color but it's still already green even though there's purple in there so now I'll do a little more because I want a little more hint of green but two drops should do it now if you wanted a, a real mint green you'd add a little tiny bit of blue in there and we'll give you that mint green but this is this is pretty I like that color. And once again, afterward, I can go in with a little bit more purple to create the shadow. Or I can add a completely different green in there or 
add more yellow to it to create highlights. So still just one little container, very little ink or paint used. This is masked again, masked. That's a, a difficult word for my mouth. Collar, collar, collar. I don't know what you mean by call or why you're saying collar. Know that I hear, or when uh, you hear me, it's already been about 30 seconds before I get, before you hear it. I've already said it and forgotten what I said. So somebody else said something and you're answering. You would love to do more art with you with me. Oh, good. You bought the binder set. Oh, you have the VHS set still. <laughs> I have a case of, I have a case of those. Time, a lot of time has gone by. At some point, I will have a new Creative Fee Techniques video and book, and we will retire the vintage one. There we go. Not a lot of green in there. And I, I don't know if this color is coming through well on the screen, but it it's a it's a pretty green. But I'd like it to pop a little more. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of the sour apple, but just a tiny drop. And try to keep it over on one side. And I'm spinning the brush. Add some white in there. I love my satin edge foot. It's a blessing to me as well. That was uh, when I when I invented the satin edge foot. I was designing it for a blind person. She was taking tailoring at the Braille Institute when I met her, and uh, I know a lot of you know this story already, and I was getting to, oh, so I would, I dreamt that I was talking to Ben Franklin, and uh, that's how I kind of got the answer to how to design the foot. What's a ferret? What are you guys talking about? Oh, a feral, the feral. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I think it's F U. I, I really, I, it's, it's funny. It's, I, I have painted since I could walk <laughs> and I've, I've not been able to get that to stick in my head. I'm going to, because around a daisy below it is green, I'm going to use green a little bit. I'm just doing little dots around the perimeter. So they're just almost connected, not quite connected, to just have a little bit of that green hint coming through. And it's almost time for me to rinse this. So I'm not using, I'm not being consistent because when we're in inconsistently, when we're consistently inconsistent, <laughs> should I make a t-shirt that says that? I'm, con I'm, I'm consistently inconsistent. <laughs> when you are, when you deliberately don't do a good job all the time, then nobody knows. I'd say the best favor you can do to yourself is never leave your brushes in your jar and see how beautiful that point is on that brush. So now I'm looking at this going, can I utilize this for the pink? I might be able to if 
I go for a more opaque color, and I love this one. Isn't this pretty? Do you think that would be nice? I think it would because this actually is the pearlescent magenta, which has hints of purple. You see how it kind of has a purpley hue when you move it around? So this in here will then bring that lavender into this and always trying to use up all the paint. Oh, I didn't keep the thing clean. It's another thing I recommend. Have a damp cloth and wipe around the screw area so that it doesn't seal shut. But once again, this is... See, if I didn't have that on there, then the evaporation process would have gone further down into the jar. And I usually use a palette knife instead of my finger. Here it is. This is the right way to do it so you don't end up with a paint covered hand. <laughs> You guys gonna make sure I don't go over time, right? It's 10 to four. At four, I'm gonna see if the postal worker showed up. And if he didn't, then I'll probably, I'll keep going till I don't wanna go anymore. This consistency of this paint is, uh, see if I can, Compare it to something. So when you receive these things, you might think that your jar is bad because the paint's so thick. But the fact that the paint's so thick means that you can dilute it down and get more shades of this color. This is a good opportunity for me to not let it get any thicker by spraying a few shots of water in there and mixing it up. What'd you miss? <laughs> That's too much. And then something like this would allow you to do, like, if you want to create a pattern on a fabric, you, know, you can just do little dots. You can also put paint all over that and create that diamond kind of shape on your fabric. It definitely doesn't do as well on plastic. <laughs> so now we're going to add some, and I should have something covering this. I'm going to go back to that. Put some pink in there. And I do want this to be considerably pink. And, you know, I don't want it to look green. So I'm going to add more. And I probably will add more of it on top to create shading. This is such a small brush and it is a, it's a relatively large area. And I also have to think about the fact that I masked some of this. So if I want the color to actually be there and I actually want to kind of see what it looks like if I don't. So I'm like, should I leave it masked so it so it has this color, the color of the fabric going all the way around the flowers after all the colors on there? I can ink away here and then it'll look like it glows. And so I think I'm going to leave it like that because why not? Let's give it a try. I love trying new things with you guys. I promised I would only use the brushes we include in the kit. Is that my bigger brush? I feel like I'm missing. Yeah, I am missing it. Here it is. Well, that's the bigger one. And this one's seen better days. So if I mix this with the, try to just use the tip of the brush so it doesn't get into the ferrule. It's funny because every time I teach, I, I'm reminded of what it's called. It, you would think it would stick. I mean... I've been, let's see, I've been painting with brushes. How old am I? Oh yeah, I just turned 60, didn't I? 
when did that happen? If any of you were around when I first launched my company, I was in my 20s. So this is a really, really dreamy color. And in the same hue as all the other colors, this has kind of a vintage look to it in comparison to that. And here's the thing. I can put this down there and add more of the other color on top of it. So I'm going to go ahead and use this. It has kind of like a mauve color, almost chocolate. Makes me want to have some chocolate. <laughs> Adding a little more water to this. My pinky is planted to support my hand so that I have more accuracy as I go around. And remember, I did put the liquid based glue to mask all the way around the heart. You should not be saying my birthday in the chat. But yes, that was my birthday. It's all right. I'm a person in the public eye. I'm used to people having information about me. Don't feel bad. But that's why I said it was my birthday week uh, when I was doing stuff. I try not to say it's my actual birthday on my actual birthday. So when these colors dry, they will dry darker than what you see when they're wet. And keep that in mind, adding a little more water. Spinning the brush to mix it. Kind of like a blender or a, a, a mixer when you're mixing cake batter. And to protect the brush, spinning and pulling up and spinning and pulling up. And I should clean the ferrule on this, but Do you guys like that pink? It's not too girly. Or do we want girly? I had a daughter that liked blue. She's like, do not put me in anything pink. Now she wears pink. But when she was a little girl, she was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to be in pink. It's going to be interesting because I am going to paint over the liquid based. And after this is all done, I'm going to wet the entire thing and remove all liquid based to see if the paint that I'm painting right now disappears. Because it's actually being painted over the water soluble stabilizer. No, I said, I said, I just turned 60. How did that happen? I didn't say when did that happen. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Yes, I just had a birthday. This is silly. I should clean this brush. And I'm going to, I don't want to waste all that paint. So I'm going to drag it to smear it out on there and get it wet. Clean the ferrule. The brushes work better when the ferrule's not filthy. <laughs> all right there we go so you know what's really funny is my cousin texted me and she goes i just got your book and i can't wait to read it and and i said the paperback and she said yes and i said but i haven't gotten my copy yet <laughs> How did she get hers? Did any of you order the paperback version of Beyond the Brushstrokes and get it? Because it's like they're torturing me. They're making me wait. And once those copies come in, those are the ones I'll be autographing and then mailing out. And by then I'll have a way for you guys to order it from me directly for the autograph copies. Hi, Ellen. What are we talking about mauve? Do you like the mauve? It is kind of mauve. It's mauve -y. It's marvelous mauve. 
but this is a lot of paint and it would be going all the way through the fabric and spreading out even with medium it's kind of hard to stop it from doing that when you put this much on there and it's just staying right where it is it's like i'm painting on paper very easy to control i can even dump a load over here to pick up a little bit at a time which is a habit i have when i paint on canvas I really should switch to my smaller brush. <laughs> Let's grab this and don't be lazy. Switch your brush when you're cutting in. Wash it off, clean it, and I'm my uh, water starting to get pretty dirty, so I have another one ready. And I don't put the brush in this dirty. Or completely dirty I put it in I put it into the dirty water first and keep going till I don't see any more thick paint around the ferrule and then try not to get a spot where I don't want it and then once I feel like it's pretty clean then I go into the clean water and clean it again and then I know that's for sure a clean brush when there's no color or pigment coming into that water. Yeah, there's a lot of people that are like, I want your book, but I'm waiting until you can sign one. So, and uh, I ordered it a, a while ago. There we go. If you're new to my channel, you don't know what I'm talking about. I wrote the book Beyond the Brush Strokes. It is available right now on Amazon and it will be available directly through me. And I am also creating or producing the Audible version. Hoping to get some, make some real traction this weekend on the Audible version. There we go. And it is a romance, a co contemporary romance novel that has kind of a mister, mysterious kind of feeling. I know there's some of you that have read it. If you guys want to talk about it, I'm going to focus on what I'm teaching, which is how to paint on fabric. For those of you who might be popping in right now, this is actually fabric that will be soft when I'm finished and I can use for making into anything. Now, the fabric that I have here is 100% cotton, and this is the Kona brand cream color. And I absolutely love painting on this compared to other cotton fabrics. It's just, it's got a nice, it's kind of like the difference between painting on a cotton canvas and a silk canvas. Very nice. The brush loves it. The paint loves it. And it has a softer feel when it's done than some of the other cotton fabrics. Also has a little bit more depth to the material. So you need more paint sometimes than you would on a thinner fabric. Is that pretty you guys? You liking it? There we go. Yeah, Amazon caught on that people were giving their books away and having people do reviews. And so they've made that against the rules. So you actually have to be confirmed as a buyer on Amazon in order to leave a review. So all the reviews on my book are organic. I did not coerce anyone to do it. <laughs> and I'm hoping there'll be more from some of you that I know are reading. Don't be shy, don't be afraid. And you don't have to do it if you don't want to. But if you do a review, you get, I can't remember what I said, so. There is a Beyond the Brush Jokes group inside of createwithclairerowley.com. I feel like that would be there.
All right. Are we liking this? I'm going to do this dot in this color. And you know what? I can actually add some dots because you can. I don't want to waste the ink, so. But I also don't want to get too carried away because I may not like it. It's better to draw it first and know you like your drawing and then start hitting the paint. So now we have pink. And the one color I don't believe will actually work with this would be yellow. But I'm going to give it a go. Why not? Let's give it a try. Might be good for a shadow color. At least, and I'm shaking this, <laughs> which the camera can't keep up with how much I'm shaking it. Another thing I, I can do is add neon yellow. So if you didn't get the neon yellow because you're like, I'm not going to do glow in the dark stuff. And this is black light paint. But it it makes other colors become brighter. So I love using the neon colors to enhance the other colors. Even if I never use them by themselves. Isn't it pretty? I like it. So you're thinking I should start auctioning off my projects? Doing, uh, what'd you call it? A raffle? <laughs> Pop. It's got like a, <laughs> is a bubble there. Pop. There we go. So I'm just going to use just the straight from the bottle and see what we get. Know that I would never have had that bright of a, of a yellow if I didn't put the white down first. Well, hello, Carlene. I don't know if you've already been in here a while, because when I do painting, it's hard for me to look at the chat. It's a fun little project to, uh, even if you don't stitch on it, just to paint this on fabric and then, you know, so if you have like a canvas bag, you could paint this on a canvas bag. I just think it's sweet. It's, uh, it's one of those sweet designs. And what's really neat is I haven't had to wait for any of it to dry. Now I know that Daisy's petals are white. However, they can also have that yellow cast off into the petal. So I'm going to just a real light touch coming from the center and coming out just a little bit. Always supporting my hand so that I'm accurate when working with a line brush like this or a round, rounded tip. So very, very light touch on there. And in here, the, the petals are kind of closed up, but there would be like a hint of maybe you might see a little of the center in there. So I'm just doing a couple dots in there and come out. What time is it? 4.07. I paint faster when I'm not talking. <laughs> I'm going to have to go check here in a second. This is me on fast forward because I know, and I, I don't want the paint to dry. I have all this wet stuff. This is why I have to stop earlier. So I'm going to go check, see if the postal worker picked up, and if not, because their schedule is not, there's no real schedule. They just show up some days, sometime, some days, another time. I still want to also add some of this 
without, see how pretty that is on there? So now we have that kind of swirly look that you would get from some art you see. Shoom. Sound effects are allowed, but not required. That's kind of cute. And this is sitting on top of that other paint. So I don't want it to be thick. Let me smooth it out. Chase is snoring really loud. <laughs> he is so tired of me working. We need a play day. Oh, I gotta go check. This is better to do with a flat, what I'm doing right now, which is kind of scrubbing the fabric to blend that out. And what's really nice about this color is it has metallic. So we don't want to cover the back altogether because that creates that shadowy look. All right. I'm going to check and I'll be right back. Looking good. I like it when you guys get all excited like that. Came in late. Hi, Amber. Welcome. <laughs> I have to be right back, you guys, because um, if the postal worker has been here, has not been here, if, the, if he's been here, I can keep painting. If not, I have to, otherwise I disappoint people. We don't, you guys don't like waiting for your toys, do you? Stop you guys. 411. Absolutely. So I've had a great time with you guys. Thank you so much for joining my Thursday. I have to ask the question too. What do I just get ready to type your answer? because I'm about to ask the questions. And if I ask more than one question, you have to answer both in one comment. And whoever comes up with the correct answer first in one post gets the giveaway, which is one of my patterns, a digital version of my pattern sent to your email box that you can select from the patterns listed at creativefeet.com. <sighs> All right. So, you know, if you're just coming in, it's you really it'd be it would be mind-boggling for you to get this cuz I mentioned this a long time ago. When what are why do I prefer to use let's say. So there's two stabilizers that you can use to back your fabric painting. One is the hold light and the other one is the stick and tear. When do I use the stick and tear over the hold light? And actually, I'll let you answer that in reverse if that's easier for you. So when would I use hold light over stick and tear? Either way, you say it or you answer it. You, and know that I will see the person before you will see the person. So 
Even if you think you won, you may not have won. Ah, don't leave your brush in the water. I want to stay and finish this. But there are people that have emailed me today. So they're... I made promises. Good show. We're back on track. Fabrically Speaking Live is back, isn't it? I figured everything out. I was capable. It, it took me hours and hours and hours of uh, watching videos and tutorials. And I finally, you know, just went, this, this is it. I, I mean, we had, the show was going pretty good. And then all of a sudden things started going awry. And uh, now I know, now I know so much more. And I'm very confident and super excited to continue with Fabrically Speaking Live for as long as you guys are willing to watch. Please, in if you're seeing this, and it is February 2nd of 2023, it is 4.14 p.m. Today, there is a coupon that expires at midnight tomorrow night because I accidentally made a mistake in the newsletter. So I extended it a day. So tomorrow night at midnight, up until then, if you type members in the coupon box at creativebeat.com, you'll get 20% off your entire order. And orders over $69 receive free shipping in the United States. If you are outside of the United States and you order, what we do is we give you back what it would have cost to ship to a person in the United States. And so you get a, you get a discount. Yes, the Octi Hoops. Everything is on sale. There's batting fuzz floating everywhere. I have no idea. I didn't even touch batting today. I think I need like air filter that pulls the batting fuzz out of the air. We did just get our big bolts of batting in. So if you're waiting for any batting, it will be shipping soon. The pressers are being made tomorrow. Michelle is back, my assistant. I have an assistant again. And, uh, working we're working whatever hours we're working it's, it's very nice and uh she's already trained you know she worked for me for 20 years so it's nice to have her back on any level and she probably she might come in and start being in part of the chat and be able to answer questions and so that i don't have to read she'll she'll tell me what you guys are saying so i can keep my eyes focused on what i'm doing Stick and tear when you want to leave the stabilizer in the fabric. Hold light when you want to wash it out. I knew you were going to answer it. But you weren't the first one. Brenda, you didn't say what. You said when you want to leave it on the fabric. And Donna, you wrote, depending on the type of fabric you're painting on. Almost. Anybody else answer? So Amy's one of those, you know, she's like the student that sits in the front of the class. I'm very proud of you, Amy, by the way. I love how you, you everything sticks. Before you start the project, um, trying to find the first person that got the answer right. So you almost got it right, Brenda, but you didn't say what. I got to be tough, depending on the type of fabric you are painting on. Actually, it's what we do with the fabric afterward. But also, yeah, because I would never want to use this on Minky, but I don't think you'd be painting on Minky. We should try that. <laughs> now I want to paint on Minky. Okay, let's see. Do, do, do. On the options, uh, Amy got it. Amy is the winner. So Amy, if you don't already have all my patterns, pick a pattern and let me know what you'd like in the school. Or you can use the Discord because we have a Discord. It's Claire Rowley is the is my server on the Discord, and Discord is a chat. So you make friends with people in here and you want to stay in touch and you don't want to have to wait till Thursday to talk to one another and have a lot of fun and 
you know, I, I participate in there, but I don't have to be in there. You guys, um, now can do that and not have to wait till Thursday and start having fun, more fun with it, with each other. I plan on giving you a lot more this year now that we got the video figured out. And I don't think there's been any hesitation or any sound issues, any flickering, any lagging. Has there? Has this been a perfect show? <gasps> Did we have a perfect show? 2023 is shaping up. I love you guys so much. If you're new to my channel, be sure to subscribe. If you click on the store app in YouTube, it shows you the products that we offer at creativefeet.com and you can order right now from YouTube. Brand new thing, <laughs> super exciting. So you don't have to sit there and try to read links anymore. You can see the color of the ink that you want, tap on it and it takes you right to Creative Feet and uh, you can order it there. Continue the process there. We've been around for 35 years coming up this August. And I wouldn't still be here if not for all of you. I genuinely love you so much and hope that you'll join my school, createwithclairerowley.com. Be sure to hit the like button when you when the chat live is over so, so that YouTube knows you had a good time. And I will be announcing the next VIP live very soon, if you don't know what that is, there's a VIP group inside of Create with Claire Rowley that you can join and you can try it out for seven days for free. And Patreon, if you, after this is over, if you click on my picture, it goes to like the about and you can see all the different social media that I offer and there's a Patreon in there. So we're going to, I'm going to start doing stuff like that in there. And I will very soon be having like badges for you guys. Anyone that joins the join members only YouTube, you'll be having like the sarcastic sisters things. And I got, I got, I got plans. I got plans for you. I love you so much. And with that, I got a boogie. I got to go. I am just trying to figure out how to go. <laughs> oh, that's right. I got to get the outro ready. And... Yeah. Love you guys. See you next Thursday. Bye.